I mean, well, there's a lot of invented color in there too, but. Okay, any other questions? Now's your chance. No more art questions? What's that? Oh, the demos? Yeah, I'll give them away. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Okay. So at this point in the painting, I've got all of my basic color scheme, I've got all of my mid-tones established, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to boost my, that's like number seven, boost my highlights and put in my darkest black values. And then I'm kind of, kind of done. Where's my teal? Like these? Yeah. 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 Some is like this, some is like this. Yeah. It's just kind of confusing because it's things in the background back and forward. Can you talk about that a little bit? Mm, I don't know if I can talk about it. <laughs> I don't know if I understand what you mean. And some and veils like, and, and glazing. Like and then you're like and then you're like, everything is opaque blue. Yes, here. yes. And, and the red too, yes, it's white. In the foreground? <laughs> no, in the, all in the back. Oh, yeah. All in the back. Okay. So you mean these tints here and yeah, these? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So there's n these glazes are all covered with veils and opaques. All of them. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like this painting where I have just glazes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this painting is this painting is opaques and trim and semi-transparent veils, and all the glazes are kind of underneath, except for the green glaze on the trees. That's that's there. That's why I said this painting is kind of more a la prima, which is mostly opaque. But how do I decide that? So most, it's mostly got white in the back, right? White in the back. All the, all the, almost all the colors have the white. Yes. They're all tints. They're all tints. Yes. I'm just painting some opaque purple shadows. That marries, that marries the background and the foreground. When you did yes, that. ties it in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good answer. I like it. 
do you mean the, the, the under red, pink. orange? Oh, like that? There? <clears throat> this? Oh, yeah. So, so. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, leave it. So, um, so what happens is when I get, when the painting is finished, I've done all those steps, then I spend probably at least that m amount of time it takes me to finish the painting, I'll spend at least that amount of time tweaking at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, just like fussing with details, that kind of stuff and maybe some areas I, I find them too dominant so I want to push them back and cool them down and some areas are not popping enough so I'll play with that it's kind of like um, like we all understand that right because when you're painting you, you get the painting and it's kind of looks done and everybody thinks it's kind of done and then you spend a lot of time tweaking mm -hmm. that's the important stuff the last five percent is more important than the first 95 percent in a lot of ways right mm -hmm. So, did you, and, and specific to her question, would you leave those orange highlights? Or would you like that? Because I was looking like, I like the orange highlights. You were thinking it was unfinished? Well, no, because the other one is other paintings in comparison to this other work. So, yeah, I don't, I, I'm, this is a demo, so I'm not really concerned about a finished painting per se um, and that question varies depending on the painting and depending on what I want to do so sometimes I wouldn't mind that sometimes if it's distracting from what I want you to focus on then I'll take it away or paint over it so my question is um, I've taken a fair few um, classes and you know workshops and things like that yeah and a lot of it is demonstration yeah but then we never get that last hour what last hour the last hour of finishing the yeah, finishing that's my, that's my, my right i know the, the finishing. right <laughs> the final tweaks. i can totally appreciate that and if it was a, if it was a longer workshop we so, would have time for that what would you recommend to do that? Would that mentorship program be something to learn that? Or? No. So the way I would say about that is that that stuff, what I would say about that stuff, that's an interesting question. What I would say about that is like, like the FCA that we talked about, that organization, they're really into that sort of thing. So that's why they have juries. And so you can get, and they do, and lots of the, the senior artists in the FCA, they like to do critiques. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's good for. So you would take a painting that you think is finished, but you're not happy with it. And you go to one of these artists and they'll give you a critique and they'll say, well, this is distracting and this, you should focus more on that and you should do more of this and to finish the painting. That's all that last five, ten percent. What that's all about mm -hmm. is just getting, getting the getting observations and criticisms from uh, a master painter mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I'm not that keen on it is because all of that stuff is really personal, mm -hmm. and so he, I don't critique people's paintings for that reason because that last 10% is all about your voice, your vision, mm -hmm. what you want to create, what you want to make happen. And so I, when people come to me for critiques, I usually say, after you've done 300 paintings, mm -hmm. I'll critique it for you. And they never come back. Because mm -hmm. if you've done 300 paintings, you know how to finish a painting. And that's something like, so what I'm teaching you is just like foundational technical stuff. So you just practice your butt off and you just keep making paintings after paintings. 
and you're going to be unhappy with the first 200 paintings, absolutely fine. That's, mm -hmm. it's like if you were to pick up the violin, you don't expect to play with the orchestra after six months of practicing, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to say, you don't, you know, go get your 5,000 hours of practice in and then come back. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think it's that important to focus on that, that idea. I think if you just paint, if you get your 2,000 hours in or your 200 paintings in, you won't be thinking about that anymore. Mm -hmm. You'll know exactly how you want to finish your paintings. And how you want to finish your painting is, is different from how I would tell you I would finish your paintings, right? Because I'm going to look at your paintings and I'm going to go, well, if it was my painting, this is what I'd do. Mm -hmm. And then you go see Janice Robertson and she'd say, well, I think you should do this. Mm -hmm. Then you go see Mike Spob and he'll say, and Dean Kropp, and they'll say, well, I think you should do this. And it's, everybody's got a different mm -hmm. opinion, right? And, and me as an artist, I don't care what they think. I don't want to know. So I hope that is a horrible way to answer your question, but because that's all I got. So I did the same thing that I did with the water. I put the blue glaze over the, the light blue tint and I wiped it off and that gives me my, uh, that gives me my dark blue sort of receding, hazy, foggy, shadowy looking snow. Mm. And then it, it creates a nice contrast with that. Um, with that opaque shadow snow now. How many hours did I do? Yeah. I did it, uh, I'm going to say about eight hours, maybe six, eight hours. Um, yeah, closer to eight probably. I did it in a day or a day and a half, not sure. So we could do it maybe before Christmas? <laughs> or, or maybe, you know, by the end of March. <laughs> That's, that's a how good, many you're planning. It's a good target. <laughs> that's why I have a video so I can hmm? do a little bit. <laughs> that's why I did a video so I can right. <laughs> Okay, it. so let's do some dark stuff with our black. So the dark, so I know that um, a lot of artists like to make their own dark colors, blacks, using all local colors. You, know, you, mix, you mix your darkest colors and it makes a, a sort of a harmonious black that blends well with the composition and that makes that makes sense and I understand why artists do that and that's the way they told us to do it in art school they told us never to use black but I notice all of the great painters of the past like to use black And the reason I like to use black is because um, black is really crisp and mm -hmm. it's really easy to get a nice, dark, deep, rich, transparent shadow without it looking dark and muddy, which it would look if you mix like three or four colors together. So it, it's, 
it's a, I like that. The other thing is because I put my black on as a glaze, I'm always able to see the colors showing through underneath. So it's all, always, always gonna look natural anyway because it's transparent in some places as well. So I get the same, I get the same principle that like somebody who is using those mixtures of, to make their blacks, which are gonna blend with the rest of the composition because they're using all the same colors, I'm getting that same effect happening only with my transparency. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you shouldn't mix your blacks if you like doing that. And I'm not saying you should use black just because I do. I'm just explaining why painters like me and Caravaggio like to use black. And you can see how as I'm putting these dark shadows and contours in, it's really creating a nice contrast. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh wow. I don't like these easels. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions as we wrap this up? Do you mentor 10 year olds? Do I what? Is it do you mentor 10 year olds? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's very different from, from what you would do with an adult. No. <laughs> so I, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know any I don't know any other artists that, that that talk about the kind of technical stuff that I'm teaching. Definitely don't know any that do that to any extent. So I can't really recommend anybody. I would totally say though. Like if I was starting out painting again, I would definitely do workshops. I wouldn't go to art school. I would just find, I would just find like half a dozen of my favorite painters. I don't care what, I don't care what they, how they teach. I just want to go and learn from them and understand how they put their paintings together. And that's what I would do. Any other top three favorite books that you would recommend? Art books? Art books. No I, no, I gave you the only one that I would, would recommend. <laughs> <laughs>